Okay. Hey, Flakers, it's me and Maggie Sensei, and today we're going to be uh, visiting maggiesensei.com slash JP, where Maggie Sensei has made a blog on love, right? So we're going to read this together. We're going to go through the blog little by little, and she's going to do the pronunciation for me. And what I would recommend is that go to magazine.com, JP, and click on the first lesson, which is the love lesson. And we're going to read that, read along and explain that, you know, just go off on maybe some tangents. And, um, you know, the, the sensei here is going to answer some of my questions and do the pronunciation. Okay? So I hope you enjoy the video, and um, see you on Maggie Sensei. Give me a break, man. I said, give me a break, man. Okay, Flakers, I'm here with Maggie Sensei. Konnichiwa. And we're going to go through the uh, magisensei.com um, Aishiteimasu blog and um, just talk about it and give you some pronunciation. And I'll be asking some moronic questions, hopefully the kind of questions that you would ask. Okay, first of all, let's, uh, let's look at this picture that we're looking at here. Um, could you read that for us, please? Ne, watashi no koto aishiteru? Suki? Kirai? Okay, so if you look this up in the Japanese, well, l let me go through little by little. I'm going to assume you don't know anything about Japanese, okay? And if, if this is too easy for you, well, tough. Um, what, you're on a Japanese for more on this uh, channel. Ne is just going to hey. It's like hey, hey, right? Ne, 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 ne. Um, you often hear ne at the end of something as a verifier, like right? Ne. Anyway, watashi no koto is my thing. Aishiteru. Do you love my thing? That's what. It, that's the literal translation. It sounds dirty, but it's not. It just <laughs> we'll get. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But I want to make a point about the word hakiri uh, shiteru because if you look in the Japanese dictionary, it says to make clear. But in this case, it's more like which is it? You know, you love me or you hate me? Make up your mind, kind of, kind of meaning. Okay, let's go on. Okay, today we're going to learn how to express love in Japanese. Love in Japanese is I. And there's the kanji for I. It's um, also the kanji for Aichiken, which is the ken or prefecture where we are here in Nagoya. A little boring piece of information for you. There's a lot of different kinds of love. There's um, brotherly love. Uh, I'm sorry, there's human love. The love towards your fellow mankind, your fellow man. That's called? Ningenai. And then there's brotherly love, which is? Kyodaiai. And then there's life with love. I know how to say it. So basically, this is um, this is describes a life that has love in it. Is that is that right? Mm. And then we have just affection, which is. Aijo. Ai suru hito is a loved one, a person you love. But be careful. A little bit later, we're gonna hear. We're gonna learn a, lear, a word called ai jin, which ai jin. knocks out the hiragana in this word. Uh, if you knock out the hiragana in the middle, you're gonna get a word called ai jin, which is a lover, which has a very different uh, meaning. Anyway, I love you in Japanese. There are a few ways to say this. Here's the first one. Literally, I love you. And a little more, um, I guess, appropriate to most of you, male talk, which is... That's my deep male voice. You could also say... or But it's male, so... Boku or ore are fine. Don't try to use any of those uh, old samurai expressions like sesha. Or anything. Okay, so in Japanese, there's often no object, or there's no subject, so you, so it's you know it's context. Context is everything. So for example, instead of saying I love you, we would just say love. For example, Aishiteimasu. Or a little bit more casual. And this is this is called the maske. Uh, verbs that end in m a s u are called the maske uh, verbs or endings, and k is uh, katachi or form. So this is the mas form, but more casual and probably what you, what you will hear from an actual Japanese person in a real life setting is Aishiteru. And um, notice that there's no e there. There's no Aishiteiru, which is the next one. Um, because in commonly spoken everyday Japanese, they drop the I. The e was, um, well, it's, it's I, but it's pronounced e. Aishiteiru. Aishiteru is just pronounced. Aishiteru yo. But the but the casual pronounced casual. Ah, aishiteru. 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 That's casual and a little bit more formal. Aishiteru yo. And even more formal. Aishiteimasu. You see, right? And um, this 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 one that she just read, read it again. Aishiteru yo. 
That is a bit boyish. It sounds a bit boyish. Okay, so that's you know if you want to sound boyish. But can a girl say that? Hmm. A girl can say it too. Okay, so you have the tomboy look, right? How about this one? Aishiteru. Right. What's the difference here? Aishiteru yo. Aishiteru yo. Right. Yeah. I'm just seeing if they're paying attention. Okay. Now, um, this is very heavy. This is I. We're using I. This is the very heavy word. We don't usually use that. Most of you probably know we use ski. Ski das more than aishitemas, right? And if we go down here, you'll notice that you will notice, I hope, that ski actually means like. But in Japanese, uh, if you use the correct um, intonation and maybe make lovey-dovey eyes, <laughs> then you will get across the fact that you are actually in love with the person and not just like them. I saw a car commercial once where a, gu a guy and a girl go to a car uh, shop, I think it's a truck, and, and I think it was an American truck, and well, maybe not American, but anyway, the guy's looking at the truck and goes, what do you think? And she says, ski. <laughs> but she says it in such a way that actually we know that she's talking about him. Although it's just one word, right? Because we don't need object, we don't need subject, right? And it's kind of cute, but anyway. Okay, so, um, ski, this just means uh, I'm fond of you, I like you. Here's some typical examples. Anata no koto ga ski desu. Or? Anata no koto ga ski. Okay, notice that you don't need des at the end. And notice she said koto. Anata no koto ga ski. Now, here's something tricky. Um, you will hear from many of Japanese teachers that we only use ga for ski, correct? But to emphasize feeling, mm. I believe we use o sometimes. Anata no koto o ski desu, right? Mm. But uh, you know, I don't know. If, is this is this, is this like uh, incorrect or? No, we just say that. Okay. So it's. I mean, it's grammatically correct to say o. Anata no koto o. It's pretty common. If you do a search on, on the internet, you'll find quite a few examples of it. But I, I don't know if it's actually grammatically correct. Mm, sound right. But it's conversationally fine. And it emphasizes the, the, the feeling. So there you go. You can use that. Uh, but be careful if you're going to put it on a test. I wouldn't want you to get lower points because of, the, because of Maggie here. But uh, Let's go down the page here a little bit. And the next section, I'm, go I'm going to read the next section here where it says, uh, after the yellow note, the examples here. We're going to read the examples for you here. Kimi ga suki. Okay. Kimi, remember, is the casual expression for someone who's lower than you. And this is going to sound sexist. <laughs> Female. <laughs> but it's not sexist. It's just the way people refer to women. Especially someone that they're... Of course, this is someone that you're, you know, romantically involved with. So it's okay to refer to them in a casual way. Right. Um, could, you, could you substitute uh, names here? For example, Yuki. Mm. Yuki ga suki. Yuki ga suki. What about Yuki-chan? Yuki-chan ga suki. Would you say Yuki-chan ga suki if you're a guy and you're dating Yuki? Oh, yeah, okay. So, yes. She nodded yes. Um, squirrel. Okay. Uh, so, there we go. Yuki ga suki or uh, Yuki-chan ga suki. Or Yuki no koto ga suki. Mm. Correct? And, anyway, that's what a man would say. What would a woman say to a man? Anata ga suki. Anata ga suki. And that's the next, uh, well, the next word in the next sentence is anata. Right. Now, anata is also a bit direct, right? But it's okay because we're have, we're in a romantic relationship mm -hmm. here. Right? Now, the next sentence. Here's something that I had a little. I had a question about. Anata ga shinyo dekinai, and shinyo means trust, right? And I was thinking, couldn't this word mean you don't trust somebody? Anata ga shinyo dekinai. But actually, this means I don't trust you. Right. Right. So be careful of that. Now, if you want to say say it clear. You could say watashi wa or boku wa or ore wa anata ga shinyo dekina and that would make it very clear. Mm. And you might need that for yourself just to make sure you're saying the right thing. Um, but conversationally you don't need to make this you don't need to indicate the subject is you. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Anata no koto ga shinyo dekina. Oh, did I say shinrai? What did I say before shinrai? That's a shinyo. Shinyo. What's the difference between shinrai and shinyo? Shinrai. I, s I often s I often use shinrai. Shinrai dekinai. Shinrai dekinai. Mm. I can. What? Well, very similar. Yeah. Very, very similar. similar. Okay. There you go. Shinyo dekinai. Shinyo dekinai. Shinrai dekinai. I think I said shinrai right here. I'm not, I don't. Mm. We'll have to go back. You'll have to go back and look at the tapes. Okay. Next sentence, please. Kare anoko ga suki nan datte. Hmm. Kare anoko ga suki nan datte. Suki nan. What's nan? That's a bread. That's an Indian bread. 
In this case, <laughs> non is a stressor. Mm, casual. Ma- casual, but it's a stress. Stress is mm. nan da. Mm. Nan, nan um, now, in this case, date is somebody said it. When you say date at the end, of, now this is this is great. Instead of saying this is something that Japanese have trouble when they speak English, um, adding date to the end of a sentence means someone said that, or like they said he likes her, or I heard he liked her, right? So it's very easy to say, you know, to, to indicate someone had said something by just adding date to your sentence. Okay, I'm gonna read a little bit here. Okay, now if you like that person a lot, you can say daisuke. Daisuke. Now this next sentence reminds me of Daichan, because I think he always says mecha mecha. <laughs> so that Jim would probably say this about Maggie because he's got some weird, um, you know, <laughs> infatuation with you here. So, anyway, uh, the next sentence here. Oh, please read this in your cute voice. Mecha mecha suki. Mecha mecha suki. Is that right? Mm. Osaka no sto wa mecha suki. Mecha suki. All right. Um, how about mucha? Mm, Nobody says mucha. I heard someone on YouTube ah, make mucha. a video about ah, saying mucha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, very, colloquial. Someone, very colloquial. Mm. So I've heard that somewhere, but I don't, I don't use it. I say mecha mecha. I don't say mecha, I say mecha mecha. Mucha kucha suki. Yeah, that's a good one too. Mucha kucha. Mucha kucha. Mucha kucha suki. Yeah, but mecha mecha is more common. Mecha mecha is more common. Yeah, mecha mecha is pretty standard. Okay. Mm. So how about this next one here? Anata ga daisuki desu. Anata ga daisuki desu, right? Um, what about the girl way? Anata ga daisuki. Really? Daisuki? I hear them. They drag out the E. Daisuki. 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 Right, there you go. It's kind of annoying. but <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, you have to remember this is the land where people's voices are very high. And anyway, um, let's go on. So, anata no koto ga mecha. Mecha desu. Oh, we made a, we made a typo here. Oh, we'll fix it. Well, this will be fixed by the time you get here. Mecha mecha suki desu. The ski is missing. Look at that. I missed that. Okay. Anata no koto mecha mecha suki. There we go, mm. right? Sounds a bit girly. Okay, so I'm sounding girly. Now, b- all both of these just mean I like you a lot. So let's look at that one more time. Anata mecha mecha suki. I said it kind of gay in a, in mm. a second. Me, anata no koto. <laughs> anata, but I would say kimi no koto. Mm. Kimi no koto mecha mecha suki. Does that sound strange? Mecha mecha suki. It still, it still sounds girly, doesn't it? No kimi no koto mecha mecha suki. Mm. In okay, I guess that's okay. Okay. I don't need these words anymore because I'm married, which means my love life is dead forever. Okay. Um, as in English, for romantic relationships, kids and parents also say this to each other. So don't. So you can use this for your parents, right? And um, I see that a lot. The funny thing in these next sentences is that although the child is talking to her, his or her mother, he will refer to her as mom and not say you. Okay, for example. Mama no koto daisuki. Okay. Mama no koto daisuki. So, I love mom is basically what he's literally saying. He's not saying, I love you, mom. He's saying, I love mom. Right? Well, you could also say, um, I love pizza, right? Bas- basically. <laughs> pizza but, daisuki. <laughs> but you would never say, pizza no koto daisuki. Mm, yeah, yeah, so, be careful. You can only use this for pizza. The adding no koto to somebody and then daisuki or ski. Mama no koto daisuki or mama daisuki. But never, pizza no koto daisuki. You can't say you, like, you really like this. I like the thing that is pizza. I like the thing of pizza. I like the pizza's thing. Yeah, it doesn't work. How about the next one? Dad, do you like me or do you love me? Now remember, ski is like, but you know, of course, dad probably thinks you mean love in this case. Dad, do you love me, dad? And kids would ask this. Kids, kids ask this kind of stuff in every country. Uh, let's see. I know it all depends. Okay, yeah. Depending on the couple, um, let's back up. Let me let me go general. Let me go. Let me go off the script for a minute. Now in Japan. Japanese don't usually, yeah, use the word I at all, right? And they don't, yeah, they just, they don't talk about it. And this is something very interesting. In Japan, they have an idea that if you put, if you mouth something or actually put it into words, it takes away value from it. And I think Hemingway once said, once you say it, you lose it. Or if you talk about it, you lose it. Which basically means if you have a good idea, keep it to yourself. And I guess love is a good idea. What's the uh, Japanese expression here? Okay, so kotoba is word. Kotoba ni suru is if you put it into words, karukunaru, it becomes light. Karui is light. Yasui is cheap. Yasui. Yasu pokunaru. Poku, uh, do you remember the poi? If you, if you haven't heard our, or seen our poi lesson, check out the poi lesson. You can do a search on Give Me a Flake Man or, or on Maggie Sensei. Yasu pokunaru, it becomes chippy. Literal meaning, right? Cheapy. But conversationally cheesy. If you say something, it will become cheesy. So, 
the question is, of course, the big question, the twenty thousand dollar question. I guess these days with inflation, it'd be like fifty-eight thousand dollar question. Yeah, well, adjusted for inflation, not just that, but we have to. We should be using yen, so it's more like the I don't know, fifty-eight thousand dollars, more like uh, five million yen. Yeah, six million yen question. Okay, that doesn't roll off the tongue very smoothly. Okay, when do we confess? Uh, when do we say I love you? Right. Well, in Japanese, there's something that doesn't exist in English, and that's saying I confess my love to someone. We just say that he confessed his love to me. I mean, it sounds very dramatic, but in Japanese, it's pretty common. Yes, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty common in Japanese. And this is not, you know, in English, it's more of a Shakespearean type of expression. But uh, here's the first one. Um, just confessing your love to someone is. Kokuhakusuru. That means to confess one's love. And the passive test, hopefully, what will happen to you someday. Kokuhakusareru. That means someone will say, I love you. Someone will confess their love to you. And here's something I didn't know. There's a slang expression, and that is. Kokuru. Kokuru. Kokurareru. And, and kokurareru. But you cannot say, well, you, you could say kokuru, well, no, nobody says kokuru hito or kokurareta hito. Nande? The person that confessed to me. No, we don't, we don't use it to, uh, as an adjective. Anyway, uh, the basic sentence is. Kare ni kokuhaku shita. I confessed my love to him. So if you tell your friend that you, you know, you finally told your coworker that you liked him, you would use this expression, kare ni kokuhaku shita. Or the opposite. And remember, that's a slang expression. He confessed his love to me. Right? I was confessed by him. <laughs> Is a literal translation, right? He confessed. Now, a little bit more shallow. Now, what do you mean by shallow? What do you mean by that? By shallow, you mean because it's not so serious? Yeah, kokuhaku is more serious. Okay, this is more like... Um, Nampa. Like, I like you, babe. Hey, <laughs> like, nice ass or something? <laughs> no, it wouldn't be fun. Okay. Um, so, I, I dig you, maybe. Mm. Okay, I'm not from the 1960s, but <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> just so you guys can figure it out. Okay, so, kudoku. Kudoku is to come on to someone and to hit on someone and make a pass to someone. Now, what about nampa suru? That's also to come on to someone, right? Uh, nampa shite kudoku. So, first you nampa. Mm, nampa is just action. Um, what's the kudoku? Kudoku talking? is you, yeah, talking and boku to tsukiyatte yo. Mm. Okay, so basically begging. Mm. Ah, so before you beg for for love, and I guess even in the bedroom situation. <laughs> so, so first you know. So here's the interesting thing about nampa. Nampa in English depends on whether you succeed or not. If you hit on someone, it doesn't mean you succeeded. But if you picked up someone, it means you succeeded, right? But in Japanese, it's b both are nampa. So you, you have to infer by the situation, you know, what if it was actually successful <laughs> or just a failed attempt, which is usually the way things go. But anyway, um, here's an example sentence here. Kare ni kudokareta. He hit on me. One more time. Kare ni kudokareta. Slowly. So these are morons. <laughs> Go ahead. Kare ni kudokareta. Kare ni kudokareta. Kudokareta. He hit on me. Hmm. Now, what if I'm a guy and a guy hits on me? Would you say this? <laughs> so, some guy hit on me. For example, if Hiko Simon, you know, wanted to hit on me, I, I could tell his wife, hey, bud, you're, you're okay, that's enough. Now, next one. Um, hopefully, though, kanojo ni kudokareta. How about, can a girls hit on guys? Mm, occasionally. Occasionally, like a tomboyish girl? <laughs> okay. That doesn't happen much in Japan, though. <laughs> now, kanojo. Kudo. Kudoita. Kudoita. Kanojo kudoita. kudoita. Not kudoshita, but kudoita. Kudoku. All right, of course. Yes, so check that out. I made a pass at her. Is it, is it kind of a, is, is it kind of a skebe, um, you know, vulgar? <laughs> no? <laughs> no? So basically, you, you're, you're, tra you're trying to chat somebody up. Hey, baby. That's what the British people say, right? Chat somebody up. Okay. Uh, what about the next um, question here? Kudoki monk. Kudokimoku. That's like a pickup line? Mm. Like, okay. ocha demo shinai. In Japanese, the biggest pickup line is ocha demo shinai. <laughs> hey, baby, you want to have some tea with me, right? Mm. Um, is that what it is? Is that a pickup line then? Tatoeba, kimi wa kawaii ne. Kimi, kimi wa. Kimi ga? Kimi wa kawaii ne. Kimi wa kawaii ne. So basically, if you're, you're chatting up a girl, those so those expressions are. Kudokimonku. So, so, so. Oh, I see. Now, be careful, guys, because uh, some of you might recognize the word monku as complaint. 
which is a complaint, right? But monku at the end of another word means phrase. For example, kimari monku. Kimari monku is a set phrase. You know, do you know any other monku endings? I can't think of any. Kimari monku. Um, you don't say like horitsu monku. No, a legal term. No, forget it. Okay, let's go on. Now, younger couples are not so shy about expressing their love, and they say things like. And. And. Really? Even young young people will say aishite. Mm. Aishite. Okay. Yeah, I guess I can. I, I you know, after I got married, all those memories were wiped from my memory. You know, by some contraption they have. Now they say it. Uh, they say it, or they text it. Really, people text that. Mm. I've never. I've never texted any of these things <laughs> to anybody. <laughs> really? Huh. Okay. Now, also, when we see our own feeling of love objectively and refer to it, we use the L word. What's the L word? Lesbian? Love. Are you sure? Because there's, there's a TV show called The L Word. <laughs> I think it, they're showing it in Japan, too. Dirty Why did you say? Well, there's nothing dirty with being a lesbian. <gasps> <gasps> Maggie's sexist against lesbians. Okay. Okay. Kare wo kokoro kara aishite mashita. I loved him from the bottom of my heart. Now, why is this in the past tense? Are we assuming the relationship is over? Uh, in this case, yeah. Oh, okay. But what if I, if I want to say, I love you from the bottom of my heart, what I, I would say, Kimi wo kokoro kara aishite So, so. I love you from the bottom mm. of my heart. You, let's practice that, everyone. Kimi wo kokoro kara. Kokoro is, of course, your heart, your actual shinzo, right, your heart. But here's, here's something to remember. In Japanese, kokoro is your mental heart. Right, your love heart, your, the the heart that exists um, in your love. I want to say love box, but that sounds dirty. In in your romantic heart, okay, it's your romantic heart, your kokoro. But your shinzo, shinzo is your actual beating flesh heart that vampires rip out and eat in front of you while you're still alive, right? Okay, or maybe that's werewolves. Anyway, um, next sentence here. Let's do the next one. Kanojo wa honto wa suki dewa arimasen deshita. One more time. Wow, that that doesn't sound very good. I don't really, I didn't really love her. And the next one? Kanojo. No, the next sentence. Honto wa aishite imasen deshita. Oh, that's connected. Ah, kanojo wo honto wa aishite imasen deshita. So the first one is ski, using ski, and the next one is using ai or love. So I didn't, I never really liked her. And that, I guess that's what that's what you would say once you got your you got dumped, right? Mm. If someone dumps you, ah, I never liked her anyway. That big ass girl. Okay. Um, all right, funny. Note in Japanese, you know, once I'll tell you, sir, once I broke, my girlfriend dumped me when I was 16 years old, and my mother said, the funniest, my mother's trying to make me feel better, and she said, you know, that girl's ass was too high anyway. <laughs> like, I don't know what that meant. Like, her ass was actually too high on her body. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that was my mother's way of trying to make me feel better. Anyway, in Japanese, this is something that's always been confusing and is confusing in the beginning. The word for he and boyfriend are the same, which is? Kare. Kare. But if you want to be exact about uh, boyfriend, you would say? Kareshi. Yes. And we'll get to, to that in a minute. But girlfriend or uh, and, sh and the word for her or she is also girlfriend. And that word is? Kanojo. Kanojo. Now, what if I'm married and I have a girlfriend? Would she also be girlfriend? My girlfriend? Aijin. That's Aijin. Uh, you, I wouldn't say my, my kind of... So, in, 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 um, I was watching uh, Las Vegas the other day, and the, um, this, the uh, what do you call it? The person who works there mixed up the gambler's wife... Confu what, what is it? Mixed up the gambler's wife and his girlfriend. So, the guy said, how can you call my wife by my girlfriend's name? So, you would never say that. You would never refer to a, a married man's girlfriend as his girlfriend. You would always say, Aijin. But you would never refer to it, right? If you, okay, if someone has a girlfriend, then he's single. But you can say, Garufrendo. And is Garufrendo mm. romantic? Mm. So, in English, if you have a girlfriend and you're a guy, it's romantic. But then, if you have a boyfriend and you're a guy, then you're gay. But if you have a girlfriend in Japanese, in English, if you're a if you're a Western woman and you have a girlfriend, she's probably just your friend. Or she, I mean, it could be a lesbian, but probably not. And if you have a boyfriend, it could be just your friend, or it could be a. Right? What about in Japanese? If a girl says "atashi no girlfriend," does does that mean she's a lesbian? Hmm. Okay, so just they're just friends. And what if? Oh, here's something important. 
if a woman, in, a Japanese woman, says in Japanese boyfriend, it doesn't mean they're romantically involved necessarily. Ah, so then. Right? It could be just friends. So if you get called a boyfriend by a Japanese woman, don't think you're, you know, don't start buying condoms, right? Because it's too early to tell. But it's still closer <laughs> than regular. Friend. Okay. Oh, really? Mm. So, the, the, so there's three levels in Japan. Mm. There's friend, boyfriend, and kareshi. Mm. And then kare. Uh, and then, okay. And there's other levels of boyfriends too, like some guy who just drives you around, ashi. Oh, furui, furui. oh really? You don't use that anymore? Oh, I got him old. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, and the most important word, question that our morons are going to need to learn is how to ask if someone is single so they can proceed with the, with the hitting on. Mm. And that question is? Do you have a boyfriend? Kare iru no? Or Kare shiru? Do you have a boyfriend? Kare shiru no? Kare shi iru no? Even a boy would say iru no? You wouldn't say iru, iru, imasu ka? Or imasu ka or iru n desu ka? Um, mm, more polite. Ne? Okay, the, the more polite is imasu ka. Kare shi, kare shi imasu ka? Or kare shi ga imasu ka? Mm. So there are many levels, right? Uh, here's another expression. Boku ni wa kanojo ga imasu. Boku ni wa kanojo ga imasu. I have a girlfriend. Why would you ever tell anybody that? Okay, sorry. Never mind. Next one. <laughs> that seems quite a quite a mouthful just to say you have a boyfriend. Uh, there is someone I am seeing. I'm seeing someone is a literal translation. I've, I'm seeing someone, right? Mm. Okay, so we talked about the fact that kare is a boyfriend is a kare or kareshi or and kare and kare, kare also also means he, but kareshi only means boyfriend, right? However, kanojo. Could be girlfriend or could be her or she. Young people say boyfriend this way. Kareshi. And young people say girlfriend this way. Kanojo. But older people from the older generation, they say. Kareshi. But old people don't have boyfriends or girlfriends. Right? Okay. And <laughs> Kanojo. Kan well, if they ask you a question, they would say, kan Kanojo desu ka? Is that your girlfriend? Now, unfortunately, as you know, all good things must come to an end, and one day, Unfortunately, your girlfriend will someday be your ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend. And in that case, you would say... Motokare. Motokare means ex-boyfriend and... Motokano. Not motokano. Motokano. Mm, you could say both. Okay, mm. so this is more modern. This is what the cool people say. Motokano. That's your... That sounds like a girl... Almost a girl's name. Motoko. <laughs> motokano is your ex-girlfriend. And... Boyfriend. And... Girlfriend. No, I want you to repeat that because remember, guys, you have to pronounce katakana Japanese in katakana Japanese. You can't say boyfriend. If you say boyfriend, it's quite possible no one will understand you. You would have to say boyfriend. And if you say girlfriend, she's my girlfriend, no one will understand you. You have to say girlfriend. Girlfriend. Okay. Now, if that skank starts being cold, I'm sorry, if that lady friend of yours starts becoming rude or cold to you, you, would, you might ask her. Don't you love me anymore, baby? Right. And uh, what about the opposite? What if it's um, this is a, gr a girl? I'm asking uh, a girl. This is for um, that's a girl asking a guy. Girl talk, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So this that's a girl would yeah a girl would ask a guy that. Mm. I would say, Kimi no koto mo no boku no koto boku no koto mo aishite nai no. So so so. And you would say if you're a girl, mm. oh, you are a girl. Atashi no koto mo aishite nai no. Oh, okay. Atashi no, atashi no koto, huh? <laughs> okay, so if you're a girl, you say atashi no koto. Um, fine, fine. You don't love me. Don't, don't you love me anymore? All right, next question is, were you lying when you said you loved me? And we say this. Boku no koto suki te itta no ni uso datta no? Uso is what? Lie. Uso is lie. Uso datta, past tense. Was it all a lie? You said you loved me, but were you lying? Were you just trying to get me into the sack? Okay. Let's continue. Other expressions to show your love are. I always. Zutto. Zutto means always for long times. Right? So, I always loved you. That's pretty easy. Next one. あなたは私にとって大切な人です. You know, let's go back to this one and say it slowly. I'm sorry. Let's back up, guys. Back up one. あなたがずっと好きでした. I always loved you. And slow, slow down on the pronunciation here. あなたは私にとって大切な人です. You are... 大切 is important. 大切. Mm, I important. care about you. So mm. you're important to me. Mm. Um, say it quickly now. Or normal speed. あなたは私にとって大切な人です. Uh, that's, that's tough listening, guys. You have to listen to this video again and again. Okay, next sentence. Well, so 大切 means important, but in this case it means I care about you. 
The next sentence here is something that you would say, a man would say, and he would say, Kimi wa watashi ni tote, watashi ni tote taisetsu na hito. Oh, I'm sorry, boku, okay, sorry. Kimi wa boku ni tote taisetsu na hito. Why do I say that? I get nervous when I'm reading in front of people that speak Japanese better than me. Okay,、um, you should see me in a gaijin class. I kick everybody's ass, except the Chinese. Oh, especially Chinese. Now, next one. Anata no koto o taisetsu ni omotte imasu. That's also a guy to a girl? Or both ways? That's both, both ways. Way, That's both ways. That's more polite. That's more polite.、Oh, why would you be more polite? <laughs> okay.、Um, next sentence. Did I miss something? あなたが必要です。あ、you are あなたが、君が、right? You could also say, 僕には君が必要です。Or a little more casual down here, 僕にはあなたが必要なんだ。What's なんだ again? Stressor. なんだ is stress. Not adding なんだ to. Be careful! なんだ to the end of a sentence is a stressor. And you could also say なんです。Okay? Now, let's go on to the next sentence here. We're about halfway through. This is going to be a long video. Hope you're listening. You can come back and watch this again if this is too long for you. If, I, if you want to、uh, tell someone you want to be just with them, you would say. Well, this actually doesn't mean just with them. It just means I want to be with you forever. Right. I want to be with you forever. Or a little bit more polite.、Mm, just use anata instead of kimi. Now, another thing that you often hear in Japanese is you tell a woman you want to make her happy. And for this, we say. Now, would you, could a woman say that to a man? Yeah, usually, man, yeah, I, I've never, no one's ever told me that. <laughs>、um, but that's something you say to a woman. Anata wo shiawase ni shitai. Shiawase, shiawase is happy. Ni shitai is make. I want to make you happy. Zutto s o b a ni i t a i Which is, I want to be with you. Soba is a noodle. But in this case, <laughs> well, there is a kind of noodle called soba. It's very popular. Is that the kind you slurp?、Right. No? Yeah, okay, that's a slurpy kind, right? soba ni But this soba means next to you. It literally means next to you or close to you. Just like me. They long. Okay, that's all. Zutto kimi wo mamotte agetai. Now, this is something I think very Japanese.、Mm. What do you think? I don't think of West, you would say in Western, I want to protect you. I want to protect you. Well, maybe somebody does. I don't say that. I think it's kind of、uh, sexist, maybe. It implies the woman needs protection, right? <laughs> oh, so this, okay, this, okay this, we got some insider information. This is something <laughs> that Japanese women like to be told. Ageru <laughs> is to give or do something for somebody. You use the te form of the verb, mamote, and then say agetai to the end. It means I want to do that for you. So in this case, protect you. I want to protect you. Now, these are all corny and cliche. Cliched.、Um, and if a third person hears you speaking like this, maybe on the bus or, or subway, they might say, Amai. Amai. Amai means literally sweet, right? But in this case, like, oh, how sweet. Oh, how sweet.、Okay. Too sweet. <laughs> Now, if you think that's, that's too sweet, you would say, Kusai. Now, I get told this a lot because I'm a stinky guy, Jin.、Right? Kusai actually means stinky. And, and, and a really corny line would be, Kusai serifu. A serifu. Where does serifu come from? Not just kanji. It's a from script book. It's from script book.、Mm. Okay. Serifu means it's used. Yeah, when you're reading a script book or something, we say that, oh, like that, that would, hey, that, those are my words. Boku no serifu. Boku no serifu. Those are my words. But anyway, that's a little off topic here.、Um, so yeah, these words mean stinky or smelly. And let's go on. To the next topic, which is actually a different kind of love, which is koi. Koi. Now, this is not the. Is, there's also a fish koi, but this is a different koi. This is, is there another koi? Koi, koi.、Uh, koi also means come. <laughs> come here. Hey, koi, koi, koi. Koi, koi, koi. But this is love koi or romantic koi. And I is deeper, but koi is definitely just romantic. Right? Now, the combination of. Koi can be read two, word, two ways. Koi is the kunyomi. Right? And the same kanji is also ren. 
and that's the onyomi. And so in some combinations, I think later, do you say renai? Mm. Okay, we have the word renai, which you will see later in the lesson. Okay, now tip the most simple, well, I'm sorry, let's back up here. There is eternal love, and that is? Enoai. Say that again? Enoai. Now that sounds like one sound, a n. N. It sounds like a n. Are you actually saying n? A n. A n. A n no i. This is forever love. Forever love. But here, that's not koi. The next one, but there's no a n no koi. You and I. Would that be like lust? Forever lust? Okay, so we don't say a n no koi. But koi is the more romantic love. Now, something when you do feel love, if you if you find that. So a special person that makes your heart go pitter patter. We use the ex Japanese expression. Doki doki suru. And that's I I I went a little bit ahead in the lesson, so I have to back up two lines. Doki 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 suru doki doki suru. Um, toki doki means sometimes. Doki doki is that beating sound, so be careful. Toki to t toki doki means sometimes, and doki doki means your heart is beating fast. To fall in love is. Koi ni ochiru. To fall in love, koi ni ochiru. And to be in love is? Koi suru. Koi suru. Now back up a little bit. We never say ai ni ochiru. So be careful. Always koi. If you say ai ni ochiru, it's, it's weird. Although literally it does mean fall in love. We say koi ni ochiru and koi suru. Koi shiteru. I'm in love. Koi shiteru. So how would I say I'm in love with you? Watashi wa anata ni koi wo shiteimasu. And that's what we say a little bit later. Right? Koi shiteru. I'm in love. I'm in love with you. One more time. Watashi wa I could say boku wa kimi ni koi. Koi o koi o shiteimasu. Do we need the o? Atemo nakutemo yu. Okay, we don't need it. Both ways, okay. Okay. Um, let's go on to the next one. Now, on, on Twitter, by the way, Maggie does Twitter lessons. Maggie, uh, twitter.com slash Maggie Sensei. And uh, one of the questions that was recently asked is who's your favorite Arashi fan? Mm. Or who's your favorite Arashi member? And apparently Maggie's is Jun. So she said Maggie wa Jun ni koi wo shiteiru. Sorry. Mm. Maggie wa Jun ni koi shiteiru. Maggie wa Jun ni koi shiteiru. So, so if we if if Daichen finds out about this, this could Ooh. be problems for Jun. Okay. Now we also say I shiteiru here. We could also say I shiteru. But the difference is, it's like I'm in love with you is koi shiteru, and I love you is ai shiteru. Maggie wa jun wo ai shiteru. Now in this case, in this case it, it may not be romantic love. It just means I like him a lot, like he's a great singer. But the particles are different. Oh, I see, I see. Maggie wa jun ni koi shiteru, but Maggie wa jun wo jun wo so, so be careful. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I thought we were talking. I thought we were talking about the nuances of what kind of love. But let's get back to the my original question. This Maggie wa Jun wo aishiteru could be. I just love his music. Like he's a great performer. No. Mm. In that case, just ski. Ski. Love, love. No, no. But if I wanted to say he's a great performer, kare ga daisuki. Daisuki. Okay, mm. okay. I see. But if you want to say you're in love with him as a in a romantic way. Both mean, but you would both, you, you could use either wo aishiteru or ni koi shiteru. Mm. Oh, there we go. I didn't know that. Okay. Now the next, uh, another word, an, an all-encompassing word for boyfriend or girlfriend, regardless of your sex or sexual preferences, <laughs> is the word koibito. 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 But as the warning here in the blog says, do not use aijin. Aijin is a lover. Like a mistress. There is no... I don't think there's a male word for mistress. You know, you're your young lover. She took a young lover. But mm -hmm. in Japanese... Is there a word in Japanese for mis like a male mistress? <laughs> no? No. Just lucky guy. Okay. Koi bito doshi is a couple of lovers. Right? And if you want to say that you are a couple, you would say... We are lovers. And this sounds more romantic than... That's not very That's not very romantic. It's just kind of factual. Oh, we're dating. Yeah, it's just we're, we're, we're dating each other. Now, the first love, the first person you love, you fall in love with, that's called your Hatsukoi. So she's my Hatsukoi. In this case, an example. Hatsukoi no hito. Hatsukoi no hito. Oh, oh, I see. Your first love is not a person. 
It's a feeling. Right. Ah, in English, she's my first love. あなたは私の初恋の人でした。Ah, 初恋の人。She was my first love person, literally.、Ah. She was my first crush. First love. I think love is better. Anyway, as I was saying before, the word koi has an onyomi, and that is ren. Ren, and in the combination koi and love together, we get the word ren ai, or? Ren ai. Ren ai, right? I always had trouble with that, with the pronunciation there when I, when I first started. Ren, ren ai, ren ai, ren ai. Ren ai.、Uh, example sentence they are in love. あの二人は恋愛関係にある One more time slowly. あの二人は恋愛関係にある。恋愛関係に。恋愛関係にある。Okay, how about just 恋,恋愛関係です。あの二人は恋愛関係です。Or how about あの二人は恋愛関係。うん、恋愛してる。恋愛関係。No? No, we don't. So you have to say 恋愛関係にある。うん。Huh, that's tricky. Okay, that's, that's a difficult one to use. Okay, or. I haven't had a relationship for a long time, which unfortunately is many of your cases. もうかなり長い間、恋愛から遠ざかっている。遠ざかっている。There is a hard one for, for, inner, for those beginning students. もう is, well, it's been, もう is an stressor. かなり quite a bit. かなり長い。長い is long. 長い間 long time. 恋愛 is a relationship. 遠ざかっている。遠ざかい、遠ざかっている comes from the kanji、uh, toy, which means far away.、Mm. So it's, I've been far away from love for a long time is a literal translation. All right. Next、uh, word is a bit old fashioned, and that word is. Koinaka. Koinaka. And I've never, I've never seen this word. I don't think I've ever learned this word, right?、Uh, and the example sentence is. Karera wa koinaka da. Karera wa koinaka da. Huh. If I said this, would people.、Um, if I, could I say this about myself? <laughs> mm, that would people laugh at me?、Mm. Okay, so if you want to make people laugh, I, one thing I love doing in Japanese is purposely lo- using outdated Japanese to make other people laugh. Because、right? it becomes a, to- a topic of conversation. And they realize you didn't re- learn everything just out of a book,、um, you, you learned it out of an old person. <laughs> How about this one? The next word is. Koigataki. Koigataki. Now, isn't that the kanji for teki? So, enemy. Ah, enemy. Koigataki is your rival in love. And it's a little old fashioned. Mod- in modern English, we say. Koi no rivalu. Koi no rivalu. Now, be careful. be careful. Don't say rival. Say rivalu.、Mm, or just rivalu. Rivalu.、Mm. Okay. All right. Now, one of the funniest things, and I'm not going to tell you、um, the answers, but something that Maggie Sensei did this time is that she went through a bunch of movies that used the word koi in the titles and,、um, well, listed them here, and you'll be surprised at what they are in English. Okay? I'll give you one so you can see how different they are.、Uh, because using the word koi is attractive to movie viewers,、mm, right? Very so, catchy. So people want to see that kind of movie, you know?、Um, I, was, I remember when they first came up with the title Four Weddings and a Funeral. The producers were against it because men don't want to see movies with wedding, the word wedding in it, and women don't want to see movies with the word funeral in it. So they figured the, this movie would appeal to no one. But anyway,、uh, the first title is. Koisuru Bakery. Koisuru Bakery. So literally, it means a bakery in love. That's a literal meaning. And you'll never guess what this is referring to. This is the title of the recent Alec Baldwin, Meryl Streep, and Steve Martin movie called. It's complicated. It's complicated. Now, that's the only one I'm going to tell you, but I am going to let you. I'm going to have Maggie pronounce the other、uh, titles, and you can go and、um, be wowed or surprised on the Maggie Sensei site. Ready? What's the next one? Do it slowly. That's, a, that's, a funny, that's one of my favorite movies. What about this other one? それでも恋するバルセロナ Now, that one you might be able to guess because of the Barcelona in the title. Next one. 恋愛小説家 Novelist of love. 恋愛 is, of course, love. 小説家小説 is novel, and 小説家 is novelist. You might be able to guess that if you have some、um, imagination. What, what, no, what movie is about a, novel, a, a guy who writes love novels? What are, what, what are love novels called? Paper, what, is, what are those paperbacks called? Oh, I forgot.、Um, there's a whole word for them. Harlequin. Harlequin, yeah, Harlequin novels. Okay, next one. 
恋の,恋の殻騒ぎ。騒ぎ Isn't 騒ぎ like big commotion? f u s s f u s s f u s s oh, F U S S, a fuss, a big fuss. A big commotion, big fuss, yes. Okay. So, <laughs> carried out of love. Fuss, kai, koi,、uh, the fuss that came out of love,、mm. I guess is a literal translation. The next one. New York no koi bito. Now, this one you probably won't guess unless you know New York no koi bito. It's a love story that takes place in New York. That's a hint. Okay, here's some other love related words. My favorite one is. Hitomebore. Hitomebore. One eye mebore is a literal love at first sight. And the next one? Horeru. This is another cool expression. I think this is cool. Horeru. And horechatta, right?、Mm. I fell in love. Like, oh man, I just fell head over heels. Kaite nai kedo, otoko no ko ne. Yep, okay, boys always say, boys, boy, this is a boy's word.、Mm. So, horechatta. Horechatta, you see a really hot babe, and you go, oh man, I'm, man, I'm head over heels. And you go, horechatta. Anoko ni horeta. Anoko. Anoko is that kid, but it actually means that girl, right? Girl. Literally that kid, but <laughs> that girl, I'm in love with her. Man, I'm head over heels. Or, horete shimao yaro. Horete shimao yaro. This is Osaka dialect. Osaka Ben, and this became famous last year because of a comedy duo that was using this as their punchline. They would always say, Hore to Shimao Yaro. What's their intonation? Hore to Shimao Yaro. Okay. And this is literally saying, Man, you're going to make me fall in love with you. Right? Okay. The next one is a, is a Shakespearean expression, unrequited love, and that word is. Kata omoi. The kata means one side, and omoi means. Omoi actually means thought. So, here's something that's interesting in Japanese. You'll often notice that the word omoi or mind, they often will say mind when they, mean, when they mean heart or love. You'll hear them talking in English. If they try to speak in English with you, they might say mind. But they're actually, what they're, if they say the word mind, they're probably talking about love, or quite a good chance, right? One sided love is literally part mind, right? Unrequited love. For example, Maggie, wa kata omoi wo shiteiru. Maggie has a crush on someone. She's in love with someone. Now, if you have a crush on someone, that other person might like you, but they probably don't know you exist. So, kata omoi would be appropriate. So, if there's kata omoi, which is one sided love, it's only natural that there would be. Ryo omoi. Ryo omoi. Ryo is both, both sides, right? Ryo ho is actually both. Ryo ho.、Um, and a very funny word is. Atsu atsu. And I hear people say that in fun ways, right? Atsatsu. Atsatsu dane. Atsatsu dane, which is, oh, look at those guys making out. Oh, they're all in love with each other. They're all lovey dovey. <laughs> and actually, we do have a word for lovey dovey in Japanese, and that is. Labu labu. Labu labu. And you'll hear, you're, you'll hear this expression a lot. Labu labu dane. So when two people are all. They say this a lot to you. If they see you and your girlfriend in a good, you know, being happy together, they'll say labu labu dane. It's kind of annoying.、Um, <laughs> <laughs> how about this one? Atsui naka. Atsui naka. I don't think I've ever seen that one before. They are in love. Kare ra wa atsui naka da. Atsui naka da. Is that modern?、Um, could be like a written form. Written form. Okay, written English. Atsui naka des. They are in love. And the,、uh, the next one is very common and not just romantic, right? Nakayoshi. So when two people get along very well, we say nakayoshi. For example, crappy cartoons likes to trail, likes to.、Um, Write mean things on my videos. Okay, Now his name is、uh, Crappy. Yeah, Crappy Cartoons.、Uh, Chinese review.、Uh, but actually, we are Nakayoshi. But he still pisses me off sometimes.、Right. Anyway, <laughs> even though he's not, I, I don't know if he's gay, but I, I'm not gay. So anyway,、um, Nakagai, to be very close. So, Ano Futari wa Nakagai.、Mm. Those two people are very close. Say that again slowly. Ano Futari wa Nakagai. Ano, ano, futari, wa nakagai. ano futari is those two people. Those two people are, those peop- those two people are, are close or they get along. Ano futari wa? Ano futari wa nakagai. Now, we got the last final bonus section here, which is how to actually use these expressions and pick up a man or woman. And then most of this is aimed at men or picking up women, but you could go either way, right? So if you're, a, if you're a young lady watching this video or listening to my voice, Please take note. The first thing you want to do is ask for their email or phone number. And how do we do this? Mail address go kan s h i n a i That basically means let's exchange. Because you don't want to just get, you want to exchange, right? Or young people say, Mail ado go kan s h i n a i Mail ado? Mail ado. Mail ado. Not adoreso. Mail ado. Go kan. Mail ado. 
メールあと交換しない、うん、so, 交換 is let's exchange so you, if you want to say exchange something just say 交換しない won't you? won't you? and the next thing is the, the, the telephone number 電話番号聞いてもいい literally means may I ask your telephone number is it okay if I do you mind if I ask your telephone number and the next step 暇な時に連絡くれる Would a girl say that to a guy mostly?、Uh, yeah. Both ways. Both ways. So when you're free, give me a call. Give me a call when you're free. Okay. Hima is free. Free time. Hima na toki, when you have free time. Renaku is contact. Renaku ste. Renaku ste kureru. Renaku kureru. Okay. And then you have to advance the situation to take it to the next level, which is ask, actually asking them out. Saso. Saso is to ask someone out. Saso. And the first expression? Let's go somewhere next time. Next time. One more time. One more time. Is together. Is, won't you go with me? And another question is, for example, are you free next Sunday? Would be. And of course, you would just replace the days for the day you want to date. Kondo no getsuyobi, kondo no kayobi, kondo no suyobi. Aiteiru. Aiteru. Notice that the aiteru kanji is sora, sky, which also means free. And if you want to invite someone to a movie, Kondo eiga demo mini ikanai. Kondo eiga demo mini ikanai. Now, could you say,、uh, you wanna, this, this means you want to see a movie sometime. Could you say you want to go see a, a YouTube video sometime? <laughs> You'd be for, if you're really cheap. <laughs> hey, you want to go see a YouTube video? I'm such a cheap bastard. I'm not going to take the movies. By the way, movies in Japan cost about 20 bucks, so it's actually not a far fetched thing to consider. <laughs> okay, and the next question, if you want to take someone out to eat, would be. Now, literally, this means a little bit delicious, but it doesn't mean a little bit delicious. It means pretty delicious.、Mm. Go to the Choto lesson. Yeah, go to the Choto lesson. Uh, oishi is delicious. Mise is store. Ga is a、uh, topic marker. Aru n da ke do. Aru is there is. Aru n da ke do. There is but. Kondo is next time. Isho is together. Ni ikanai. Won't you go with me? Now, more direct ways to ask are. Feminine.、Uh, the, the female will say the next sentence, so I won't say it. Kondo doko ka ni tsurete te kure nai? Tsurete te. Oh, I've heard this before. Tsurete te. Tsurete te. Oh, now, literally, now more, more formal, you said tsurete te. But、mm. in here we're dropping the e, so tsurete. 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 Won't you please take me somewhere? Take me somewhere interesting, right? Or. So you literally say date o s h i n a i But in English we don't say, hey, you want to go on a date so much, right? Say, hey, you want to go out s o m e w h e r e You want to hang? You want to hang out? You want to, well, maybe, young, I don't know what young people say anymore, but. <laughs> Do you want to go on a date somewhere one more time? Be careful, you need the ni because ni is used when you're indicating a location or you're going somewhere. Next one. Next thing you want to know is are, do they have a you know, boyfriend or girlfriend? And we already got that, but here's another way. The key word here is ima. Ima means now. Are you seeing anyone now at the moment?、Right? And I don't mean at the moment in the room, I mean in their life. <laughs> And the next question is. Now, often when you ask someone out for a date, they say, let's go out with other people, right?、Um, and how do they say that? They say, group だったらいい。Ah, group だったらいいよ。Group だったらいいよ means,、oh, I wouldn't mind if we went out in a group. みんなと一緒なら。Yeah, みんなと一緒なら。But if you want to you know, cut out all the, all the distractions, you would say, do you want to go somewhere just the two of us? And you would say, Futari means just two of you. Just the two of us.、Okay. Now, if someone asks you out, then it's obvious that they like you. But if you ask someone out and they say chotto, then I'm sorry, but you really need to check out the chotto lesson immediately and take a pause and come back to this video or this blog. Okay. Now, regarding dates, regarding dates, here are other ways to ask people to go on a date. First of all, the date expression is date s u d e to go on a date. And the question is, the first question is, Next time, Kondo, date shinai. Negative asking question. Date shinai. Won't you go on a date with me? Or. And now, and now I'll cut this out. To indicate you're dating someone, you would say, 
someone to date する。For example, if you have a date with your boyfriend, you would say 彼とデートする。うん。Or 彼とデートある。カレットデートがある。カレットのデートが、うん。の。今日デートがある。今日デートが。今日デートある。今日デートがある。あ、really。so you wouldn't you would you would say 今日はデートある。うん、but if you want to say you date you have a date with him you would say カレットデートする。うん。カレットのデートがある。カレットのデートある。No you don't say so that's interesting guys I didn't know that so although I did know you have you say date ある when you're indicating you have to date go out with someone you would say カレットデートする or します。Okay wow what do you know Okay next one 日曜日。日曜日はデートの約束があるの。I have a date on Sunday and it probably means him right Next one 初デートでドライブに行く。初初 you might have remember from Hatsu Koi a few minutes ago. Hatsu means first. So, for our first date, we're going to take a drive. Doraibu ni iku, go on a drive. Okay?、Um, popular date spots in Japanese are. Ninki date spot. Now, please remember, date spot. Don't say date spot. You have to say date spot. And now, if your relationship starts to get even hotter, right? And you start dating each other, and you are famous, you may find it necessary to make an official announcement to the press <laughs> that you are officially seeing each other. And for this, we use this expression. Kosai sengen. Kosai is actually a formal word for dating. Kosai shiru. Sengen is announcement. Announcement. And the more casual expression is tsukiao, right? Just dating someone, tsukiao. Tsukiateru is just seeing someone. Do you ever say kosai shiru? Kosai shiru. More formal. Very formal.、Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, I'm, I'm currently involved with your daughter, sir. Tsukiyatte ri hito ga imasu ka? Imasu.、Uh, I'm seeing someone. Tsukiyatte ri hito ga imasu. And we are seeing each other, which is something women would say. Watashi tachi tsukiyatte ri na. And a guy would say, Boku tachi tsukiyatte ri nda. That's what a guy would say. So, you can pick your sex and choose the appropriate one. The next expression is, I've just started to see someone, so I don't know what's going to happen in the future. You want to indicate this、uh, occurrence, you would say? Hmm.、Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops. Okay, please check back. If you like someone very much and you want to go out with them, you would ask them, Please go out with me. That's very polite.、Right? Or, Please go out with me. Nai nai shite kudasai. Please. Or, Yo katta ra watashi to tsukiyatte kuderu? Yo katta ra watashi to tsukiyatte kuderu. Now, yo katta ra looks, literally looks like if it's okay, if it's good.、Mm-hmm. But、um, conversationally means it's possible. And remember, boku is for men, and ore is for men, and watashi is usually for women, or atashi is for women. If you start getting more serious or you want to ask someone out in a more serious fashion, you would use this expression. Majime na o tsukiyai. Majime is serious. Majime. Anito majime, this means that guy is a pretty serious guy. Majime na is adjective. Tsukiyai is relationship. So majime na o tsukiyai is a, a, a serious relationship. Another way to say the same thing is. Shinken na o tsukiyai. Shinken is also serious. Shinken. Do you say Anohito Shinken? No. No, we don't say that. We say Anohito Majime. So if you want to say someone serious, you say Anohito, Anohito wa Majime desu. And officially date someone is. Please officially date me.、Mm. When would you use this? When you're thinking about marriage. Oh, I see. Okay, so if you want to close the deal. Marriage wise. Another、uh, way to ask someone or to indicate to a person that you want to date them but you have all good intentions and you are seriously thinking about getting married in the future and you're not just playing around, because playing is asobu, asonderu, you would use this expression. I would like to have a relationship with you and I'm thinking about you know, hopefully marrying you if things work out. All right? Let's finish up the lesson by reading the blue here. ねえ、私のこと愛してる Hey, do you love me? 好き嫌いはっきりして Please, and this, is, well, this was in the original picture, right? Do you like me or not? Make yourself clear is a literal translation, but as I said in the beginning of the lesson, it basically means, which is it? Do you love me or do you hate me, right? The last,、uh, the message from Maggie is, Maggie-sensei is, 日本語での愛の表現を覚えましたか
それでは誰か練習で私に愛を告白してみてください。そういうことです。そういうことです。そういうことです。そういうことです。そういうことです。そういうことです。そういうことです。そういうことです。そういうことです。そういうことです。そういうことです。誰か、somebody, that is who, but 誰か、somebody, 練習 anybody, or anybody, oh, okay, in this case,、uh, what's, what's somebody? I'm talking to them. No, but what's somebody? 誰か、mm-hmm. Oh, well, 誰か is somebody or anybody, but in this case, it's anybody, because you're, she's,、um, you're, she's indicating anybody. Anybody with, anybody, 誰か、練習で for, pra- for practice purposes, <laughs> literal meaning, anybody, For practice purposes, Renshu is practice. Renshu. De, Renshu de, for, pract- for practice purposes, Watashi ni ayo koku haku shite. So please confess to me. Anybody, will anybody confess to me that you love me? Koku haku is confess your love to me. Please confess your love to me in the comments. We look forward to seeing those comments. Thanks for sitting. If you, if you sat through this whole video, then I'm really impressed. And the key word at the end of the video is what, what's the word? Ai s t e m a s I s t e m a s So if you got all the way to the end of the video, please write I s t e m a s Thanks for listening, everyone. お疲れ様でした。素敵な恋をしてください。Everybody, thanks. That, that literally means、um, what? Thanks for all your hard work and good luck and love. <laughs> Give me a break, man.